So now we will see how to interface analog to digital converter with 8051 microcontroller. So this ADC is very important device which is used for the development of some project or some product. Basically uh, all the physical quantities when we sense the physical quantity then from a sensor we get analog signal. And our processor or the controller is a digital processor. It processes over digital data. So we have to convert the analog signals into digital signals. Then only we can process that data. Now you just take an example of uh, temperature. So temperature is a physical quantity. So when we use a sensor to measure a temperature, then from the sensor we get an uh, analog signal which is equivalent to certain uh, temperature. So then we will convert that analog signal into digital data. After that digital data will be processed by the processor with the help of some instruction or the code which we have written and finally it will generate certain output. So how to interface ADC? with 8051 microcontroller our ultimate aim is to discuss that but before coming to that interfacing first let us see about analog to digital converter and the IC which we will discuss is 804 ADC so this IC is a 20 pin IC so this is a 20 pin IC what are the various pins and what are the significance of those pins of this particular IC that we will discuss. Uh, suppose this is our ADC804 IC. So this is our 804 ADC. So in this IC, there is a pin, uh, we call it as V in plus. So, this is one input pin, and another input pin is V in minus. So, this ADC will convert an analog signal into digital signal. So the analog signal, uh, the value of the analog signal which will be applied to this IC will be given by, by V in and this is equal to V in plus terminal minus V in minus terminal. So difference between the voltage of this terminal and this terminal is your actual analog input. So that input will be converted in digital form. So generally V in minus is connected to ground. We connect this V in minus terminal to ground. So what will happen? V in will be now V in plus minus. Now this V in minus is connected to ground. So it is 0 volt. So this is V in plus V in. So if we connect V in minus terminal to ground then whatever analog signal we apply at V in plus terminal that will be your analog input. Right? So this is your analog input. Analog input is V in plus. Now there is another input pin that is called as V reference by 2. <coughs> so V REF V reference by 2. Now this pin uh, is basically used to calibrate the input voltage range 
to select the input voltage range. So if V reference by 2 pin is open, if this pin is open, uh, then V in or V, v say then uh, analog input voltage range will be from 0 volt to 5 volt. If we have not connected anything to this, then the input voltage range to this ADC will be from 0 volt to 5 volt. Now suppose in our some application, uh, we are using some sensor and we know that our that sensor sensor will generate a voltage in the range of suppose 0 volt to um, 3 volt. Only this much is the voltage range which we are going to apply to, to this ADC in some application. Then in that case we have to select this voltage range. right? To select this voltage range, what we have to do, whatever is the maximum uh, input voltage expected divided by 2 is the voltage that we have to connect here. So in this case, maximum uh, in, in this voltage range, maximum ex expected voltage is 3 volt. So 3 volt divided by 2. So we will get 1.5. So in this case, uh, we reference Y2 should be connected to 1.5 volt. So if we reference Y2 is equal to 1.5 volt, then V in range, input voltage range is from 0 volt to 3 volt. And if V reference Y2, suppose we have connected to 2 volt then V in range will be from 0 volt to 4 volt because the maximum expected voltage is 4 volt divided by 2 we will get 2 volt so V reference by 2 should be connected to 2 volt so by just adjusting this input range Basically, we are going to change the step size, right? So, we will discuss about the step size. Okay, so this is how we reference by 2. So, it is basically used to, to select the uh, input analog voltage range for the ADC. Now, there is a pin. CLK uh, two pins are there CLK R and another is CLK A. Now to operate this ADC, to operate this ADC, we have to we have to supply some clock signal. So if the clock is readily available with us then directly we can connect clock to CLK in. So for CLK in uh, connected to clock signal. And if we are not having uh, 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 clock is not available here, then this IC is having inbuilt oscillator, right? So we can use the, that oscillator also, but in that case, uh, with CLK R, we have to connect one resistance, and with CLK N, we have to connect one capacitance in this way. So with CLK R, connect one resistor, connect it the second terminal of the resistor with CLK N, and here you connect one capacitor, and connect the capacitor to ground. So this is C, and this is R. So if we connect 
one resistance and capacitor in this way with CLK R and CLK in, then internal oscillator will be used and internal clock will be generated. So if if we are having suppose the value of R is 10 kilo ohm and value of capacitor is 150 picofarad then the frequency of the clock generated will be given by a formula 1 by 1.1 RC so in this case it is 606 kilo hertz so we will get a clock of 606 kilohertz. Now in ADC, uh, the moment we apply some analog signal, immediately it will be not converted in digital signal. This ADC takes some time to convert it from analog to digital. And how much time will be taken by this ADC? Will depend, will depend upon the clock frequency. So if the clock frequency is 606 kilohertz, under this clock frequency, the conversion time, we call it as conversion time. <coughs> conversion time is uh, time required by ADC to convert analog signal signal to digital signal right? that is conversion time so if clock frequency is 600 6 kilohertz in this case the conversion time is 110 micro seconds it is 110 microseconds <coughs> so if we have a already clock in our electronic hardware then directly you apply the clock to CLK in, in the, that case there is no need of CLK R pin you keep this open if you don't have any clock then connect register and capstan in this way so internally oscillator will be excited and uh, clock will be generated now there is another pin called as cs bar this is chip select right this is chip selection signal so if we are using adc in our application then this particular adc chip has to be selected. To select this ADC chip, we have to apply a zero or ground to CS bar in. So this has to be connected to ground. If it is connected to ground, then our this, this ADC 804 is selected for the operation. Now there is a pin analog ground and another pin digital ground right there are two pins for the ground one is analog ground and one is digital ground now see in this IC in this side we have connected the analog signal so it required the ground of analog circuit and this side we will generate a digital signal so we require a ground of digital circuit. So both grounds are there. So analog ground and digital ground. So we connect these two to the ground. And there is a VCC pin that is connected to plus 5 volt. This is VCC pin. Now this ADC804 is having 8 bit 
digital lines. So this is D7 to D0. 8 bit digital output lines. So till now how many things we have covered? We just see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 8 V spins, 9 and 8 is 17. And now we are having 3 pins left. Now in these 3 pins, 1 pin is Uh, it is called as a start of conversion. A start of conversion, or in some books you will find it as right pin. Now this is this is our input pin. The purpose of this pin is uh, a low to high signal over this pin will start the analog to digital conversion process okay so suppose here we have applied some analog signal and conversion of analog into digital will not start till we have applied a high a low to high signal at this pin so at this pin we require this type of signal a low to high Right, this is low high. So we require a low to high signal at this pin, then only the conversion process will start. And there is another pin, and that is the output pin called as end of conversion. End of conversion. So start of conversion in short we will write SOC, end of conversion in short we will write EOC and end of conversion in some books also you find it as interrupt, interrupt pin. So now this pin is the output pin, by default its value is high. Once the analog signal is converted in digital signal then this pin will go low for small duration and again it will come back to high position so we will take we will see one timing diagram suppose this is uh, time t is equal to 0 <coughs> at this time we have applied some input v in plus we have applied some voltage at v in plus now start of conversion end of conversion suppose this start of conversion is at value 0 so if it is at 0 position or it is at high position the conversion of this analog signal into digital signal will not start it will start only if we apply a 0 to 1, a high going pulse. So now suppose at this time we will, we apply, we write EOC here. We apply a high going pulse here at this time, at this particular time. Suppose this time is, let us assume uh, 100 micro second. So at 100 microsecond we have applied a low to high pulse at the start of conversion pin. Now what will happen? End of conversion pin is by default it is high, right? Its value is high. This is the time. Now at 110 microsecond we have applied low to high pulse at the start of conversion. So the analog signal conversion into digital signal this process has been started internally inside this ADC right and let us assume let us assume uh, to this ADC we have we are having R as 
10 kilo ohm and captured as 150 picofarad. So under this condition we know that a, a clock, internal clock of frequency 606 kilohertz will be generated. And if this clock is generated then the conversion time, conversion time will be 110 microsecond. So in 110 microsecond analog signal will be converted in digital signal. So let us assume this is 110 microsecond. So at this time analog signal is converted in digital signal. So what will happen this end of conversion pin it is high at 110 microsecond the moment when digital signal has been generated it will go end of conversion will go low for a small duration it will go low for a small duration like this and again it will come back to high position like this so if we monitor end of conversion pin if we simply monitor this pin and if this pin goes low for a small duration then it, it will be an indication that analog signal has been converted in digital signal. Now the analog signal has been converted in digital signal but these signals are still not available over these 8 data lines. It is stored inside, inside this ADC, inside this ADC there is latch, there is a latch, deep flip flop type of thing. So that digital data is stored inside that latch to bring that digital data over this data line, over these data lines we require third pin and that third pin is an input pin and this is read, we call it read bar, read. Now a high to low signal over read pin. So here you have to apply a high to low this signal. This is high and this is low. So when the signal over this pin goes from high to low, then whatever is there inside this latch, that is your digital data, that will be that will be available over these eight data lines D0 to D7. So now these eight data lines will have the digital data which is equivalent to the analog signal. Right? So once the end of conversion goes low, then what we have to do? This is V in plus. Then we will take now read bar signal. So initially suppose it is high. Now it is high. Now what will happen? At 110 microsecond, analog signal has been converted in digital data, digital form, and this will be indicated by a low pulse over end of conversion. So now, when the end of conversion will go low, after some time, what we shall do? We will send a already read read pin is high. We will send a low signal over read pin. We will send a this low signal. Right? over read pin. So now this low signal will make the digital data available over these 8 digital pins and now from these digital pins we will bring the digital data inside the microcontroller by connecting these data lines with some port, port 0, port 1, port 2 or port 3 with any port we will connect this. So in that way the digital data will come inside the processor. And once it, I, it is inside the processor, then we can process it, we can compare it, we can add some value to it, we can subtract some value with it, so we can do the processing. So this is the whole uh, working of ADC 804.